quickly realized once we got to those milestone markers that you think, oh, once I get there, then. Once we arrived, quote unquote, we actually felt like we didn't arrive at all. When your life on the day-to-day is all about you, it's actually a sad life. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janine Amapola, and welcome back to the podcast. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Um, I am currently filming this on a Friday. I have a very busy weekend up ahead of me. This episode is pre-recorded, I think, like two weeks already. So at this point, it's September is like literally right about to end. It's so crazy. We are already going to be in the month of October when this episode comes out, which just means that I'm about around this point, like a month or so out of my wedding which is just so crazy oh my gosh but also you're if you're watching the youtube video or spotify you might be wondering girl what is up with your face um i got a facial yesterday and so my skin is very like um it's still healing i did micro needling yesterday so i couldn't wear like as much makeup and i'm just a little it's, it's going to start scabbing a little bit. So you'll start to see a little bit of craziness on my face. So let's just not mind that. But I am honestly so excited for the weekend. I have a very busy weekend. I'm filming this podcast. I have an event after this. And I'm going to go see my best friend Maddie speak tonight at a church. And then we have some other super fun things. So I'm really excited. Of course, always stay tuned on my Instagram to always see what I'm doing. But this episode is a little bit longer, which is why I'm ready just to get into it. Because I really, really think this episode is going to be so such a blessing. I found it to be a blessing. I'm bringing on Stevie and Cezanne Hendricks and they are influencers. They have a podcast called The Good Life and they are now new authors. And so they are coming onto my podcast to talk about their new book. And honestly, I just really loved the conversation. It was very genuine and they give practical advice and tips on a good life. What are some things you can do to slow down, to find rest, to take notice of things and to hear the voice of God and just things that you can do overall just to have a better life. And that is really my goal of my podcast is to hopefully help you guys out and find, you know, ways to improve your life practically in your mental state and your physical and your uh, spiritual life. I'm super excited to bring them on. I really think you guys are going to enjoy today's episode. They are such a sweet, fun, godly couple. And I've looked up to Cezanne for a really long time. And so it was an honor to have her on. And I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. All right. Welcome to Happy and Healthy, Stevie and Cezanne. How are you guys doing today? Hey. We're, hey, y'all. We're What's thriving up? over here. How about you? I'm pretty good. Well, you know, I could be better. Like I said, we were talking before the podcast started recording how I was dealing with some vertigo stuff. But for the most part, I'm good. And it's a Friday. We're filming this on a Friday and have some fun plans this weekend. Do you guys have any fun plans? You know, probably going to Chick-fil-A later with my kids, For real, <laughs> dance like, parties in the car. You know, that's the I, season I, we're in. <laughs> we, and when I said thriving, when I said thriving, there was like an asterisk because I was totally joking. I don't ever say I'm thriving. Redefining what thriving means. Yeah. Uh, and first of all, 99 degree weather and it's literally about to be October. Plus we're on like, <laughs> we're on like that, that school schedule again because our daughter's in kindergarten. So Cezanne and I are not, you know, we haven't had a nine to five you know, in a long time. And so being on a schedule again, we're kind of rebels. We're like, I don't like that. So we actually are living for the weekend. So Saturday (laughs) we're sleeping in, we're making pancakes. Like we, like who knows we're watching football. We do whatever the heck Heck we want to do. With chaos in the background, you know? (laughs) Hey, I like your, I like your sweater, Stevie, because I went to Texas. So I'm a Longhorn. Hey. Oh, and yes. we actually are good this year. I so know. I'm go. like, is Texas back? I don't know. I'm praying finally. We'll see. Oh, man. That's so kind. Yeah. And yeah. also, like, y'all, it's almost October and uh, it, I'm still sweating outside. Like, I'm pretending on the inside. I have my little brown sweater. Mm. No, it's still, <laughs> you're still sweating outside, but that's mm. just Texas for you. <laughs> I know. As, as, I, as content creators, we are actually making it feel like fall in our homes and in our wardrobes. Yeah. But if only people knew that I'm gonna it's say, freaking hot. I'm going to say something, though, because I do not like the heat. Cezanne gets tired of me complaining about the heat. Uh-huh. Me and God have like been talking <laughs> about it. We've been talking about it a lot. And he's tired of me complaining. So what I realized, y'all, is like, I think, I think, this is my theory. I was talking to somebody else in texas 
I think people are known for being nice and hospitable because it's so freaking hot. Mm. Because like in the middle of the summer, like you can't really go outside and enjoy it unless you buy like some water or something. Yep. And so like everyone's okay. just getting roasted. I was like, and where I is he going it, with this? No, seriously. <laughs> I, everyone just gets fried to death. And I, I think it creates this camaraderie of just like, we're all going through so it. So then you become more <laughs> hospital by yeah. creating the warmth and the coolness yeah, in your home by yeah, inviting yeah. people over and just being couch bums all day. It really I, is I'm, the only I mean, way you can survive. Theory. Yeah, I totally get it. I I'm know. also with you, hate the heat. Like every summer I'm like, why do I live here? I question my existence every time, <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to have you guys on. Um, Cezanne, I've been following you for a while. I, we have a mutual friend and I found out about you through him and I followed your page and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like, how old are you by the way? If that's not rude to ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm at 33. I'm about to be 34 in a few days. Oh so. my gosh. Happy early birthday. That's so fun. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like in <laughs> four I'm years. Up there. Yeah, no, but you still look amazing. <laughs> I, I just feel like though in like the next four years, cause I'm about to be 30 in March. I feel like in the next four years, like I see myself being like you. So I resonate with your page a lot because I know you're also mixed and you guys, the way you guys do your life and your faith and your families, I just feel like there's a similarity there. So I'm really excited to have you guys on and just talk about all things life because you guys just came out with a book and I know your book is in the back right there. So I'm going to read the title of your <laughs> book right now. I know before we filmed this, they were, like, they were like, stick it in the middle right there. So your book is called <laughs> Real Good Life. Discover the simple yeah. moments that bring joy, connection, and love. And who doesn't want that? Like, I feel like everybody wants that. Yeah. So tell me more uh, about the book. Why did you guys write it? How, how was it working together on the book? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, we just want to say we're so happy to be on your podcast. When we were starting the journey, actually, in writing this book, a big part of it was like asking our community, like, hey, what kind of podcast do you guys love listening to? Like, that was my secret little way of investigating which podcast we would try to hopefully pitch to get on to help promote our book. And so I have to tell you, when I put up that little questionnaire on my stories, so many of my followers put your podcast. Wow. And so I instantly was happy about that because, hello, you're amazing. I was already following you too. So it just it really is amazing that I feel like our worlds really do align in a really cool way, even though you're a few seasons behind me. Mm -hmm. And I mean that in the best way because you're not even 30 yet. <laughs> but I'm just so happy and honored to be on your amazing podcast today. Talk about our book and life. Um, but exactly what you said, we all want a good life, right? Yeah. But what does a good life really look like? You know, not the one that I think we've been spoon fed our whole lives living in this Western culture, the life that we've seen on advertisements, billboards, Kanye West song, for example. Yep. <laughs> good um, Let's go. So, you know, to unpack this question and getting to do this alongside Stevie, it really all started through the journey of our podcast, right, babe? Doing yeah, yeah. our podcast, The Good Life and getting to meet so many people from different walks of life, different beliefs, and really getting to understand what it means to genuinely live. For Stevie and I coming from LA, and I know you were there mm -hmm. um, too, and I think what you see out there, it's a totally different life, and we kind of got sucked into it. And we quickly realized once we got to those milestone markers that you think, oh, once I get there, then. Once we arrived, quote unquote, we actually felt like we didn't arrive at all. We right. said, what is this life here in LA? And you, yeah, and you you asked the question too, what was it like writing this book together? Well, if you look at the front of the book, <laughs> we're like, we're laughing, we're like yeah. hugging, we're like, woohoo! Yeah, yeah, we look, y'all, it didn't look like that when we were writing this book. <laughs> it looked like we were strangling each other, like we were fist fighting, we were yelling at each Wrestling other. Wrestling with like, God, all of the things. Yeah, I'm just being yeah. real, but that's what this book is like really about. It's like real stories. And yeah. so honestly, writing this book together and doing this whole thing and going on this journey was so hard. It took us, what, five years to like get this thing to the finish line. And that was because we kept going back to the drawing board, different ideas. And uh, it was just such a challenge. And mm. I feel like that's what this book is. like. Even the stage of life that Tazan and I are currently in, we just had our third kid. Like, what? Like, what? like you had your third kid and you're launching your book? Yeah. I told her the other day, I was like, listen, this God's seems... God's timing, man. I was yeah, that's like, crazy. this seems like a cruel joke. Yeah, I was like, this seems like like God is laughing at us. I was like, 
but he did this on purpose. Like he mm. knew, like we tried for seven months to have this third baby with our mm. first two instant, like we got <laughs> pregnant, but this one, did a seven longer. months. Yeah. And so I was like, God literally knew we were going to have this third baby. He was going to be on the boob all the time. And we are trying to market and launch this book. I was like, dude, that's, that's like, life. I was like, that's a joke. Right. But no, like that's just real life. That's and so, so funny. like, I feel like God is making us live out what we're talking about. And so in the book, we talk about a lot of real stories, like going back to like when we were kids, when we first met. And, uh, so like it, it's been a really challenging journey, but and I feel like anything that's worth it, right. It's like, it comes with a lot of challenge. And I just, you know, talk about God's timing, you know, I feel like the message, I think just what, whether it's our book or I think what we're putting out there nowadays as creators, I think for Stevie and I, we've always kind of wrestled with what, how do we really truly influence, right? You you build this community. For us, it's been a decade of just the the constant hustle and grind and just trying to show up and figure out this thing, right, called mm -hmm. the internet. And when we got sucked into it, it was during a time where, again, we didn't know what God was going to do with, like, this whole social media thing. Is there actually, is this monetizable? Like, can we actually make a living and a career and a purpose out of this thing? And as you've seen in how you walk out the day to day too on your platforms, like it can be really challenging sometimes, especially as a believer, when you're like, God, I don't really want this to be about me. Like ultimately, I want you to do what you're going to do through me, but you wrestle with that because at the same time, you have to show up on these stages. You have to stand in front of people in the virtual sense. And I think Stevie and I, what we realized doing this year after year after year, we were like, yeah, we've gotten to share our life, the beauty tutorials, the tips and the tricks about lifestyle stuff. But at the end, we're like, God, we want you to shine through us. So humble us and give us a good story to share with people. And so he took us on this journey, which started with our podcast, The Good Life. And it really was a lot of surrendering, laying down a lot of things that we thought were cool, that we thought people wanted to see and things that we thought we wanted to share. And God really truly allowed us to discover what is your why? Like, mm. you know, when you get asked that question, we were really able to go on that journey and figure out what is the message and the mission that we're going to go on now for the rest of our life in the social media world and as creators. And so this book is really that first, I feel like tangible product that God has allowed us to really pour our heart into. And for anybody listening, I just want to say, when you think about your life and you look at your life today, it may not be where you want it to be, but if you could just stop right now and look up, look up from your phone, look up from the chaos that might be motherhood or in the season that you're in, maybe you're walking through the singleness, trying to find the one. I would just want to encourage people to stop where you are and start being an advocate for your life. And what that I think requires is for you to be like brutally honest with yourself and with God and to sit with that life that is current and to be able to pick out like, what is the good things that are actually in my life right now that I'm not celebrating, that I'm not mm. noticing, that I'm not looking at? And to be able to, yes, romanticize about those things that you do want in your life, but you have to first and foremost be an advocate and know that life is not about sitting in a waiting room waiting for a miracle to happen. It requires you to, to step out, take that leap of faith, but to actually do some practical things in your life as well. So while this book has so many of our real hard, you know, wins and losses, stories and, and trials and errors and things. These narratives also have things that really we hope and pray will give people the practical tips and tools that they need to navigate in the world today to uncover, right, what this real good life is all about that God has for you. So that is our hope and prayer for this book in a nutshell. And it was, yes, like Stevie said, quite a journey, girl, to, <laughs> to get this out into the world. <laughs> Wow. Thank you for sharing. I, I honestly love, love that advice because, you know, if no one's going to fight for you, you've got to fight for yourself. And I think that is such a good piece of advice is that, you know, you've got to sometimes be your own best friend, your own biggest cheerleader, because that's who's going to get you to the finish line. Like no one's really going to drag you there. And sometimes they may, and then sometimes they mm -hmm. might leave, you know? And so I think that's such good advice. Yeah. And, um, 
I love you. I love just like the overall message that you guys are promoting because I think what I kind of find, and there's a weird dichotomy in I think Christianity where some people are very bent on talking about suffering and like we're just sinners and we're suffering in life is this and this and then I'm and then there's the prosperity gospel <laughs> and then you're like oh my goodness where where's the middle of this you know and I think yeah. I'm very much on the same mindset of you guys of man life does not have to be nearly as hard as we make it out to be and I think it actually could be more quite simple yeah. and I think that is probably the message that you guys are sharing and trying to encourage people is that like, Hey, if you implement practical things that can change your life. And so I'd actually love to hear in maybe your day to day, because you guys talk about, you know, like, Hey, these are some practical things you can do to get this good life. What are some of those practical things that maybe not the influencer, not the person that is able to work from home, the everyday mm -hmm. person that has the nine to five, what can they do to kind of channel that good life? Well, I'm going to say something that literally came to me recently. And it's something that I felt like God put in my heart, like back in college. It's so weird, but like it resurfaced recently. And it's something that I didn't, we didn't write specifically in the book, but it's definitely like interwoven in the stories mm -hmm. in the book. And that is like, when your life on the day to day is all about you, mm. it's actually it's actually a sad life. It's actually hard to see the good when you're completely focused on yourself. And what I mean by that is like all of us go through things, right? Like you said, there's the Christians who are like, oh, we're suffering and we can make life much harder than it needs to be. But that happens when you're constantly focused on yourself. So like going back through this whole journey, y'all, to be honest, Cezanne and I had this major like hiccup that came with the book like a week ago. Mm. And I just remember saying like, God, like our book launches in a week or two weeks. Like, what are we supposed to do about this? Like, I don't have control <laughs> over this issue. And you know how like when something goes wrong, you wanna fix it, you wanna do something about it. And it's like one of those things where you're like, you can't really do anything about it. And I felt like the Holy Spirit just whispered to me, it's not about you. Wow. And I was just like, okay. And you know what's so great about that, y'all? Like is when you realize and you become okay with and you actually celebrate the fact that your life is not just about you, it actually takes a lot of pressure off of you because then the things that are happening in your life, they're not just happening to you, they're happening. God's allowing them to happen, but they have a purpose. So if things are happening to you and you say, woe is me, look at what happened to me, this is my problem, you're constantly just going to be focused on yourself. Mm -hmm. Your eyes will not be looking up at him. And so things can come, problems can come, trials, troubles, tribulations, but when you're not fixated on the problem, you're not fixated on yourself. So your eyes are actually up. You're mm -hmm. actually able to take in the beauty and the goodness that's all around you because he's put it everywhere around you. And so my point is, is that we, it's very easy to become fixated on yourself and on your problems. But I really believe that it starts with that. It starts with actually saying like, actually, this isn't, this isn't, this life isn't about me. It's about God. It's about people. It's about community. And yes, I play a huge part in that. And I get to share in that wonderful re relationship between God and myself, but it's not just about me. And so I think it's easy to get to that place, but when we can look up and look around, we can actually see like there's so much good all around us. And to something even more on a granular scale, I think I, I can get in ruts. You know, I think we all can because we're living in a generation today where it is very different than even 10 years ago. Everything is so hyper I mean, from constantly dings and buzzes and alerts on yeah. our phones to if you're in a season with kids running around the place while trying to also manage a business, like there is going to be things in your life that are just going to be thrown your way. There are things that are going to happen in your day where five things are going to go according to plan and then 10 things are not. And it's just that is kind of what's going to potentially just show up in your day. And while those things are inevitable, and we talk about this in the book, right, there is this opportunity where we can either just like react to all of these things happening, or we can set our eyes and really create what we call a gaze strategy, yeah. where you can really set your day with intention that yes, while things are going to go array and things are going to go cray cray, I can still navigate 
alongside Wright, our creator, to really make sure that this day can still be a winning day. Something that I want to encourage everybody to do today, this is like Mama Saz's homework. <laughs> I'm about to be 34, which means I'm everyone's mom now. And so I want to encourage everybody to sit with a pen and a paper. And I said pen and paper, not your phone for a reason. Mm. Let's put pen to paper and let's sit down and let's draw out the mountains in your life today. What I mean by the mountains are the obstacles, the things that are actually distracting you. Okay. Maybe you're having issues in your marriage. That's a mountain right there. Maybe you're having some real issues with your personal health. That is a second mountain right there. Maybe your child has been needing attention and maybe needs to have certain areas of their life assessed. You need to put that as a mountain. And then what I want to encourage you to do is take out that leap of faith, but also work on those mountains one mountain at a time. Instead of avoiding the problems that you have in your life, like take it one mountain at a time. And in those mountains, you create those one steps at a time. And I believe that we were not, like Stevie said, created to do this life on our own, where it's just me in the fast lane for me, myself, and I. I think it is important that we reach out to our left and our right. But what we're reaching for is the difference, I think, that we make in our real good life. Are you reaching for your phone? Are you reaching for the comparisons, the distractions of what Susie's doing down the street? Are you reaching for the alcohol addiction that you might be having when you're going through a hard time? Or are you reaching out for the things that are actually in the people that are gonna help you get to the top to achieve some of these really hard things in life? And I think the way that we're wired today, we cannot do this life alone. You need community, you need God, and you need the people around you who are gonna be honest with you when the going gets tough. And those same people are gonna be with you to celebrate when you're in your highs as well. So I wanna just encourage anyone and everyone to go on that journey today to audit your life, figure out what those mountains are and know that like, no matter what, when we wake up every day, God is waiting right there at the foot of our bed. Just picture that. When my little boy, Oliver, wakes up every morning, he smiles first thing when he looks me in the eyes. And I'm like, <laughs> why aren't we doing that more? Yeah. Why aren't we doing that? It almost gives you that that reassurance that like, I'm going to get fed. Like he knows mama's got him. I'm going to feed you, baby. You know, your diaper's going to get changed. I feel like God looks at us that same way as his children on a whole nother level. But how often do we wake up Janine and just like walk past God when we wake up out of bed, when he's waiting for us. And it just, it makes me emotional as a mom who loves her child, but then to know that the father loves us even more infinitely than what we could ever imagine. I mean, how often do we just pass him by and I just don't want people to miss out on what God is going to do for them in their day and in their life. But if we just stop and have the eyes to see, that is the beauty of a real good life. Beautiful, man. I love that. That's a whole clip right there. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, thank you so much. That was like, honestly, I loved the practical advice. I think that's always my favorite thing is when, you know, guests come on and they give us a takeaway of like homework to do essentially and riding yeah. the highs and the lows. And, and I also think like kind of what you're saying, Stevie, as well, is that a lot of it is perspective. It's a perspective shift. It's yeah. how do you want to see yeah. this mountain? Do you want to see this as an obstacle or do you want to see this as a challenge that I get to overcome? And I think that yeah. it, it is such a perspective shift. And I understand, like, I'm not here to negate or diminish anybody that's going through something quite severe. Like, if their mom is suffering from cancer or whatever, like, that's a little different. Right, but I right. think controlling what you right. can control and then praying about the things you can't control and you surrender those to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I love, I love, love, love that advice. And I think it is so easy to not be intentional. I think even what you guys are saying is like just being a little bit more intentional throughout our days to carve out time or to notice things or to notice people, to notice the presence of God. Intentionality is such a good word. When you, you said you wake up and you set your intentions. And it's funny because I'll say that to my fiance all the time. I'm like, what are your intentions today? And he never understands what I'm saying. He's like, my intention yeah. is to like work. I'm like, no, that's not what I mean. Like think bigger, you know? So <laughs> I think that's such good advice. Yeah. Take me back sure. a little bit because 
you guys mentioned that you were wrapped up a little bit in the social media world. And I've been there too. I've also been doing this for 11 years. I know what that's Mm -hmm. like. I did the whole LA thing. It's very easy to get wrapped up in it. So when you mean you were wrapped up and maybe you weren't seeing the, the good life, what was that like versus what are you guys doing now? How are you creating space a little bit more? Because, you know, I read, I read on your um, notes here that you guys want to share the importance of, of rest and stuff like that. So how do you balance rest now with kids yeah. versus what you did before when you were in the hustle and bustle? Yeah, I would say it's so much harder with three kids now. Like, dude, my heart goes out to people who have three plus kids. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it, y'all. Y'all y'all are on like a different wavelength. Like three, like people told me, they're like, oh, three, three broke us. I mean, like one, honestly, you just like get used to being a parent. Two, you're like, oh, this is the three. I'm like, dude, there, where is the time? Like, we don't have any time <laughs> for ourselves. But like, yeah, going back to like that question, it's it, honestly, it's small practical things. I remember when we lived in L.A., our life was just hurried mm-hmm, all the time. The like it was like there was all this opportunity and we were just trying to snatch it all. There was all these events. We were trying to hit them and we, re- we ran ourselves ragged, you know, and I think people that saw us online probably thought like, oh, my gosh, they got they have what I want, you know. But really, we were living this really burnt out lifestyle. And I remember Cezanne and I, we, we kind of do this every year. Um, but one year when we started doing this, we had had Valentina, our daughter, we took a walk in the park and we just audited our year. And we look back and we're like, dang, we did it all. Like we did, like, I don't know how much we traveled. We traveled everywhere around took the every world. Opportunity, did it, yeah. Like we, we kind of crushed it. But at the same time, like, how do you feel? And we both looked at each other. We're like, not great. We felt a little empty. Yeah, to be pretty, honest. pretty exhausted, pretty burned out. And so what we realized, we're like, we're not feeding the other areas of our life and super unbalanced, you know? And so I think for Cezanne and I, one practical thing was leaving LA was a big thing for us and laying that down because that wasn't idle for us of like that lifestyle and the look of the quote unquote good life. Cause we were living the quote good life that we heard about that we wanted as, you know, high schoolers and college students, you know what I mean? That's what we wanted. But what we realized is like a good life is actually more of a simple life. Uh, and you can have big moments, but you're not meant to live in overdrive. And so, like you said, creating space was a big one and all that says. And I remember it's, it wasn't, and it wasn't that God just kind of like checked out and left us in that season. It was just like, all right, y'all go play on the playground and just run yourselves I guess ragged. You guys, you guys don't have time. You know, for <laughs> we were still in those, even in those seasons of life, like we were still drawing into the Lord. We were still praying about stuff, but somehow, some way he allowed us to be those hamsters in the running wheel. And it was almost like it was for a greater purpose so that we would almost come out of it on the other side and see like, well, we did that. And now we need to go tell people that like, hold up y'all, that is not the good life that you hear about and that you see everywhere. And so we were allowed to go through that and it was hard. It it almost felt like, you know, when every opportunity, like you get all these opportunities and you almost feel like, anxious if you don't take it. I was really struggling with like my peace. Like, are you, if this costs you your peace, you know, that quote that says, and it's not worth it. I really struggled with that because in my mind, I thought, well, I want to be a provider for my family and I need to do X, Y, Z. And what the Lord constantly showed me would corner me with is the fact that, hello, Instagram is not your provider. You know, I'm your provider. And so I noticed that he would constantly allow me to tuck away And when I would tuck away, I would find these pockets of peace in my life where I thought, I want more of this, God, but how? How will it all work out? And right when we go to our Father, we have those doubts, and you can wrestle with God about, you know, tell me and show me. And the way God works is He gives you little sneak peeks sometimes and little nuggets if you're lucky. And then in some seasons, He's silent and doesn't say anything at all. But in that silence, He's actually speaking volumes, right? And so it was a lot of that that while we were taking these opportunities and trying to discern what is right and what we shouldn't do. That's when we realized, I think after coming out of it, that, you know, Pastor Rick Warren, who we love, said it best, you know, God is not concerned with the perfection of our hearts. He is concerned about the direction. And if we could stop worrying about the perfection and really tune into the direction, we would start to see that every single opportunity on the table isn't an opportunity that you have to take. You know, in fact, sometimes opportunities actually feel a little bit like 
gluttonous, I feel, you know, like if everything is being thrown at you, like how, how content do you need to be? Like, aren't you full? Aren't you satisfied? Like really right. discern that in your spirit. Like, do you need to say yes to this? And so as a mom now, my kids have been my saving grace. And I think God has used them for good because even in seasons where I feel like we could be doing more or we should be doing more, not every season of life needs to be a season where you're going a million miles per hour. And you can go out in nature and you can see that. The trees are not looking like fall all year round, which I wish they were because that's my favorite season. Same. <laughs> there are seasons where the trees are barren, where they're naked. There's nothing beautiful when you look out. It's just everything feels like, ugh. But there's purpose and meaning even in that season that God uses in nature. So I just want to encourage anybody, especially the young listeners that you have on your podcast, you know, for us, hopefully being big sisters and brothers to you guys, you know, don't make those same mistakes that we did. In fact, see the beauty that is in your life today and in those simple moments, how you can discover connection, joy, and love that's right in front of you, mm. despite not being where you want to be. Like God is going to help you lay those, those invisible steps that you will take out into those opportunities, but do not feel like you have to do it all. And I'll say, don't do it all even though the world might tell you otherwise. Mm, wow. Very, very powerful. I love that. It is so true. I think, especially when you look out on social media, you constantly feel like, oh my gosh, falling behind, not doing enough, not posting enough, not traveling enough. My house is like, you never feel like you fully measure up. And you can, you can always feel like you're in that hamster wheel. And I'm, I had the almost exact same story of like hustling, bustling, working, grinding. And I was single, so I could do it all. And thankfully I've had a fiance who's been like, okay, let's slow down. You don't need to say yes to everything. Yeah. But then you realize like you've been going and going and going and going and going. And then you look back on your year and you're like, what did I actually produce? What did that actually do? Was there any fruit that came from that? Was there deeper, deeper connections? Did I know the Lord more from this season? And so I think it's exactly what you guys are saying of like taking those audits or being more discerning on what you say yes to versus what you say no to. But I think when you're younger, you have more capacity. I'm like, travel the world, do some things. But I, I literally just talked about this on my podcast yesterday of like how not every opportunity is a good opportunity because because the enemy, you know, mm -hmm. he loves to dangle things in front of your face and take this, do this. This will totally. give you money, fame, success, whatever. And in the end, it robs you of life. And then you're like, why did I do that? And so I love Preach. that encouragement. And I think it's just a reminder to pray before taking a job or making any big decisions because you don't want to have something accidentally happen or regret happen because you weren't able to slow down, which is what you guys were talking about, like slowing down, pausing, resting. And I think that's just like such powerful advice. When you were talking, it reminded me of a verse that I bumped into when I finally got my quiet time. You know, I've been in this postpartum fog with our third and I've just been trying to soak it up with him because I'm like, you know what? This is probably gonna be our last kid. Like, I just want to enjoy this season of motherhood because in previous pregnancies and postpartum journeys, I've just been kind of in that reaction mode and, you know, freaking out over the unknowns. So in soaking it up, I haven't even had a chance to like look up and like go have my quiet time with the Lord. And I'm like, I know God doesn't keep tabs or say like, Hey, he actually has literally said that to me. Like, I don't need you to sit with me. I'm showing you how to walk with me. He specifically said that to me in my second postpartum journey. Cause as moms, when you become a mom, you miss that sweet time with the father. But what you realize is like, wait, God is actually with me even in my dreams or even like he finds ways, right? To connect with us in whatever season of chaos that we're in. And so I finally had a moment where all my kids were sleeping. I was like, what do I do with myself? So I actually, instead of doing the dishes, I was like, which is what I, the Monica in me wanted to do. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go sit on the couch and open up my Bible and see where I left off from before three months ago, when before I had this baby boy. And when I opened up my Bible, it landed on Hebrews 10. And this whole chapter and this whole section is talking about just how the old ways just are not cutting it anymore. And that you've got to be able to lean into the new ways in which God is going to lead and guide. And so it talks about Jesus and how when he made that ultimate sacrifice that he did, what he did after he did what he did on that cross is he went and he sat beside the father. There's this beauty in like he paid the ultimate price. And then after that, it's like 
the job was done, and then he sits beside the father, right? And then you see, like, so often we want to, even slowing down, we still want to be moving. We still want to, like, figure things out and be in control. The art of sitting still is one of the hardest things, I think, you know, especially for our generation. So I feel like a lot of us, we might be in a season where God is just like, come sit beside me and don't move. Be still. Let me show you some things, you know, and it's like hard because when you're sitting beside your parent and there's a playground, you want to go run after and you want to go run and play and you want to do all the things. But to just genuinely sit next to God, I think it's in that stillness when true faith is at rest, I believe that is when God can genuinely and really start moving us, right, in that direction that we want to go. Because it is about the direction, not the perfection. And so that is one of the practical things I would say is like, I dare you to try to sit still. Is so hard, you know, <laughs> for me oh at gosh. least. I don't know about y'all, but that could literally be the thing that you need to do right now in this season and I'm giving you guys the permission to do that. Mm, that's so good. And the Bible says to be still and know that I am God. And I think sometimes it's hard to know that he is God when you aren't stilling yourself. You know, it's those moments yeah, when yeah. you can pause and you can say, OK, God, I'm having a hard time actually trusting and believing that you are God. And he's going to probably say, hey, be still and wait for me, wait for me to show up and remind you of who I am. Mm-hmm. But in that hustle and bustle, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys read the book, the, Ru- the ruthless elimination of hurry by John Mark Comer. I mean, one of the most convicting yeah, books book. I've ever read. <laughs> so good. So I love that you guys are talking about that. And it's a good reminder for me as well, because with social media and with all these things, it's so hard to slow down and it's so easy to get caught up in all the things. And I think Stevie, you were even saying this earlier of, you know, you would say yes so often that it was like you were chasing these highs almost. And I think I remember going through that too. And I think a lot of people do that. They are constantly wanting that adrenaline and the endorphins and you're chasing high after high after high. And then suddenly those don't satisfy you anymore and you need something bigger. You need Mm -hmm. something larger. You need something different. And I think there's so much beauty in finding, um, finding life in the mundane of like, Hey, how can I find and see God while doing the dishes or while sweeping the floor while going on a walk? I really think like, you, what you said in the beginning of the podcast, like we found that the good life is a simple life. And that's something I'm learning as well. And I'm like, I don't want my life to consist of constantly chasing a new vacation or new this or new that in order to satisfy me or make me feel complete and whole because we've all learned right. it never will. <laughs> I think what's been really cool is like, as Suzanne and I are getting older, like I said, we do feel that draw to the simplicity. And I think when you're younger, it's just natural, you know, like the, the society, the culture that we grow up in. But when you do travel to other countries, you're like, we're some of the only people that are living this way. I mean, like, yeah, like first world countries with big cities, but like we're some of the only ones who are doing this. And so, and we've probably only been doing this for the last 200 years or something, maybe even less. So it's like, when you just look back on time, you're like, we weren't designed for this. Yeah. And so what lately I've been just asking God is I'm like, God, what were we designed for? How were we meant to live? And and also what is what is my purpose and and what does that look like now? You know, because Susanna and I are so blessed. We feel so blessed that we get to spend as much time with our kids as we do because we work from home. But I know that's not a reality for a lot of people. They have to go to work from nine to five. Mm-hmm. But I can't help it when I'm like working on something or I feel like I'm really busy and I see my daughter over there in the living room and I'm not talking to her, I feel convicted. And I'm like, <laughs> why do I feel convicted? I have a lot of stuff to do. I can't hang out with a three-year-old right now. <laughs> like I'm busy, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah. I asked that question. I'm like, God, like, what is that? What is life supposed to look like? Because there's a lot of dads who aren't here for nine, 10 hours out of the day and they can't do anything about that. But I have my daughter at my fingertips and I'm still distracted right now you know what I mean? So it like, it, yeah. it, I just keep asking that question. I'm like, God, what is the life? What does the life look like that we're, that we're meant to live and help me do that as much as I can while being able to support my family, you know, be a good husband, be a good father. And I really believe like Cezanne said, it's a, it's a direction of the heart sort of thing because yeah, we do live in a modern world, but we can still take those, the old ways that God meant us to live and bring them into now, which is a lot of like that simplicity and that stillness. And really it's, 
deep connection. And sometimes those Cezanne's talked about this, they don't have to be larger than life. You know, it's like, okay, I'm done with work. Let's go to Chuck E. Cheese. It doesn't have to be that because Chuck E. Cheese is kind of grimy. That's gotta, that larger than gotta, life thing yeah. though, as a kid, yo, you we came, we came from humble beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck I mean, Chuck E. Cheese was like the epitome of like, we are having a great time. It was the ball. I epitome. went there growing up too. Anymore. I get That's it. Nasty. Ball nasty. epitome. And like, you know, but I'm serious. Like, but it's like, it could literally just, you know what I'm Five learning? Five minute detour. I have two daughters. Okay. Dad does doesn't play Barbies. I, I I really can't do it. I just cannot. <laughs> but I can color, and that's hard. But I'm like, okay, like hand me that blue. You know, let's color it. And we have a great time. But also, it like calms me down. So it's kind of cool. But I'm like little things like that. Like my oldest daughter, I literally colored with her in the bed before bed, y'all. And I don't do it that often. And when we got done, we're laying in bed. I pray for him. And she doesn't like she doesn't really vocalize like how she feels about stuff that often. You really don't ever know. You're like, I guess I'll find out in a year. She goes, Daddy, thank you for coloring with me. And it was the most genuine, oh, like... Oh, my gosh, my heart. I was just like, wow. Oh. I know. I I'm like, I'm like, okay. It's these... I try to ball out for my kids yeah. and do all these things. And, and they don't care about the that. The fact that I just sat with her and colored for 10, 15 minutes, like, that, oh. like, that's the most genuine thank you I've gotten from her in a long time. And I was like, dang. I mean, where does your wow. nostalgia go to? Like, when I think about my childhood, I don't think back to all of the times when my parents, like balled out and like like I said we came from very humble beginnings and so for me it was like yeah we got the Nintendo that they saved up for you know but like when I look back at my childhood it's not I'm not thinking about that Nintendo I'm thinking about the little five minute detours my mom took in her day as she was like struggling to make ends meet to come sit with me to come be with me and you can easily link that back to right our relationship with the people yes in our physical earthly life but even with our supernatural right godly life like sitting with god and just being still it doesn't have to be these larger than life things i love that not once in the bible do we hear that jesus was running anywhere wow. jesus sprinted to this jesus ran to the top of no jesus walked on average three miles per hour and that really goes to show that he was able to see to his left and look to his right and genuinely connect with what the things in life i think meant and what mattered and you know jesus came he got, here he got in the ball pit is what you're saying and he he came and he, yeah. he was doing like those yeah. little ball pit angels like you know you do snow angels <laughs> he was just being present and i think we've lost sight of that and it was when stevie and i went actually and left the united states and spent some time in switzerland with our kids last year when we finally wrapped up the message of this book that brings it home and the outro of this book and it was we were in switzerland it took us actually leaving our life stepping into other another world part of the world to really understand the true meaning of a real good life and so i really hope if anybody has been listening to this episode today and you've just been like yes i feel that or i'm connecting with that i just want to encourage you to not leave this episode and feel like my life is a mess i'm feeling overwhelmed like i've been doing it all wrong that's the opposite one of our yeah, mentors ha said something recently that really encouraged me and i look to her and i'm like she is like one of the the most amazing moms. All her kids are older. It's actually John's mom. Beth. <laughs> I love her. And <laughs> Beth Volk is one of the most incredible humans. And She's while, I mean, all of her kids, what her and her husband have managed to do is like their kids are all like our age now, but they all want to go back home now. They all want to go back and like spend time with their parents. And that is a true gem to have cultivated like what is the secret like what have you done to where your older kids when they come back to their hometowns they don't want to go hang out with their friends they want to hang out with you guys like what did y'all do right and what she said was like she asked she said do you want to be like do you want it do you genuinely want that and yeah. when you think about that you're like yes i want my kids to come home and want to genuinely hang out with me and she's like if that's really the direction of your heart you're gonna have that because no matter what you do and what you say and how you live out your day, if that is your North Star and that's what your like, your hope and your dream is for your life, you will get there. So if you're listening to this, ask yourself like, what is that North Star for me? Like, what is the one thing that I think about, I dream about, that I just like, I wake up in the middle of the night being anxious about? And it's like, no matter what, if you want that thing, whatever it is, if it's really the million followers on Instagram, if that's what you're really thinking and hustling for, I guarantee you, you're going to get there. But really ask yourself, like, is that what genuinely, like, is a real 
good life thing that I want for myself. Mm. So for me in this current season, I want to have memories with my kids. I want to have memories with my husband. I want my daughters. I want to be their best friends. I want them to come home when they're 18, 19 from college and want to hang out with me. And so if we just continue to focus on the good things that we're doing towards that goal, I believe that we're going to get there even in the failures, even in the day-to-day mishaps, if that's what your true genuine thing is that setting your heart on fire, you'll get there. And so Beth really encouraged me with that. And I want to encourage everybody else too listening to set your eyes on that thing, you know, have the, have the eyes to see the good and focus on the good. Mm, I love that. Yeah. The whole North star thing is awesome. Knowing your why, knowing your purpose and hopefully blessing people along the way. So I love that. And y'all just seem like some such awesome parents, like truly one of my uh, favorite videos on your Instagram. (laughs) What's your second daughter's name again? Amari. Amari. Okay. When she's the little waitress, please. (laughs) Do more of those. I am obsessed with them. I probably watched the sa- the one where you're like, you don't have water. And she's like, no. Like, it was so- Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know exactly what you're talking about with so the green glass. So funny. Okay, we yeah. never thought that that video would become the viral. I, I mean, oh, talk about like, yeah, like- the unexpected surprises in content creators yeah. life that video has so been funny biggest- we tried to get her to do it and like she's so aware for like a two-year-old like she saw that i think she heard us playing it over and over because like people were obsessing over it and then we were quoting it around the house and she would just kind of look at us and now i can't she's get on her. to the next thing now she won't do it oh. we're like girl just put that but listen listen amari is what we've realized is that girl is viral like the way that <laughs> yeah she has this like intensity about talk her. about having the like, eyes to see she's on a whole oh nother wavelength gosh, of life she is like the star in our family but it's hilarious for all of <laughs> we're all loving it this is her era and you know but you know what we realized about that content it's like yeah she's just kind of taking our orders with these little green glasses that she has on that's now gone viral all over the internet (laughs) but what was so genuine in that moment for us was we were actually on a family vacation when stevie like busted the camera out because we genuinely wanted this memory for ourselves (laughs) because she was like just so present and in the moment and we were like this is the most adorable thing ever and We were just connecting with our kid and it was so cool now to see how like that moment we were like let's just share a piece of that with the world Mm. because that video went on girl for like 15 minutes (laughs) but like to share a little piece of that with the world and to see how that just sparked this joy and connection with people like what an amazing thing god has allowed us to do to be able to like show what family can look like in 2023 and how you can laugh and you can enjoy life. You don't have to take it so seriously. And he can even use our kids to spread that message of good. And so what an honor and a privilege it's been to be able to, you know, hopefully continue to open up our homes and our life through the internet that we have. Because, you know, doing it for a decade, you're kind of like, if it was up to me, I probably would have stopped doing this a long time ago. You know what I mean? But when you know that God can use it for good, then you're like, all right, I just got to keep showing up and, we're just having the best yes. time being able to to open our doors. Okay, guys, we had some minor complications. We had some horns honking. We are back, though. <laughs> but, you guys, thank you <laughs> so much just for coming on. I absolutely loved, loved this episode. I love following you guys and just seeing what your kids are up to. You guys are amazing parents. You're an inspiration. And hopefully we get to meet each other in person soon. So thank you guys so much for coming on. And let my followers know the where they can name. find you and, and buy your book. Oh, man, you can find us on Instagram at Cezanne, at Stevie Hendrix, yes. and get our book at A Amazon. Real Good Life Everywhere, Whatever. where books are sold, I guess, is October the popular 10th. slogan. Let's go. 10 10, and Let's you can pre order it now, too. So, We're so go excited. get your copy. Thank you for having and us on. We this hope it blesses fun. you. Of course. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I hope you guys have a good day, and I will chat with my followers later. Bye, guys. All right, you guys, that was today's episode with Stevie and Cezanne. I really pray this was a blessing to you. I really loved this conversation. I love just their vulnerability and they're just so down to earth. So if you enjoyed today's episode and if you are new here, please subscribe. I post every Tuesday. Leave us a review if you are enjoying this podcast. Those help us out a ton. And you can always check out my Instagram and the Happy and Healthy Instagram where we post on there daily. We post extra clips and things like that. So we love to also repost anytime you 
guys are listening to the podcast. So feel free to tag us, tell your friends about us. We really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you do, of course, let me know. And I will see you guys again next week for another episode of Happy and Healthy. But until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, guys. Bye.